Good morning and welcome to Blackpool and the Fowles College and the Energy HQ. And we're really grateful to be here in this, these superb surroundings where the students are beginning to come back. And this is a session led by me, Miranda Barker from East Lancashire Chamber of Commerce, about low carbon innovation. And I have with me Stuart Thompson from Global Energy Systems, Paula Gill from Business Information Group, and Stephen Sykes, who works both with the Chamber of Commerce and our Chamber Low Carbon Programme, and also is the director of the 2030 Hub. And you'll learn more about all of those things during the course of this conversation. So first of all, just to set the scene, I'm an environmental com consultant by background, and I've been passionate about low carbon innovation. And this is now something which all of us hear about. But it's really hard if you have a new innovation, a new idea, to actually get it successfully into the market. There are so many barriers in the way. It's very hard to get money to build something when you don't have a customer. It's very hard to get the opportunity to demonstrate that product to a potential customer. And it's really hard to get the money to build the first one. Once you've got an order, you can get money. But how do you get that innovation away? And that's what we're going to explore today. We've really tried in Lancashire to set up a whole ecosystem of support to support new companies developing those low carbon technologies. So we've got a whole range of programmes available. The first you're going to hear about in a few moments is the Chamber Low Carbon programme. And that really sets the baseline of support. It gives the basic understanding and support to businesses developing those technologies. Is it a viable technology? Is there a customer base for it? How do I advance it? And we field into those potential inventors of those technologies lots and lots of support with specialist consultants, one of whom is, is Paula, so you'll hear about that. And then on top of that, we've developed uh, in partnership with the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre the opportunity to develop your product physically and have a low carbon demonstrator space in their unit in Salisbury. And then thirdly, we have the scheme called REDCAT which is Lancashire's Centre for Alternative Technologies, and that's benefited from government funding which goes directly to our companies to help them set up and increase their manufacturing of low carbon technologies, as you'll hear about from Stuart later on. So we'll just take you through all of those various support elements, and hear some real life stories of how people have had to live with those and what they've been doing, and then we'll be available for questions from the audience afterwards. So I'll start off by going to Stephen, Stephen Sykes, who's our Programme Director for Chamber Low Carbon, to tell you more about the Chamber Low Carbon, about how that has worked with people who are just at the beginning of developing those low carbon technologies. Chamber Low Carbon uh, supports Lancashire SMEs. Uh, it's an EU funded uh, programme and is around till June 2023. Uh, we have a, a, a number of ways to help businesses. The, the Chamber Low Carbon Programme offers advice and guidance on how to reduce energy consumption and how to improve and reduce your carbon footprint. That's just one side of things. But then we've got the, the innovation side, the support to help uh, inventors or uh, people who are developing new technologies to actually bring them to market. So when they come to us, we'll actually assess where are they at. Are they at a stage that they need help from us or actually, no, they need a, a, the support of a university because they need more research done on their idea, more research to actually help them formulate their idea. Uh, are they at the stage where they've, they've got the proof of concept but need a prototype? And then we may signpost them into uh, Innovate UK. But if they're at the point where they have the prototype, the proof of concept, and they're looking to take that forward to be manufactured, then that's where we've got the various specialist consultants to help them engage with that process to identify which are the Lancashire manufacturing companies that have the right specialist technologies, the right specialist uh, material uh, knowledge. So from that way, we can actually help them uh, put the manufacturing plan together and actually help them bring it uh, to the market. So quite a, 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 a long step along the way, but it's where does the Chamber Low Carbon Programme fit in and actually where can we then dovetail them into uh, other um, organisations who are providing support within Lancashire. And it's having all of that support in one place, isn't it? Yes. Because we, we, we spent years working with people who were having to get that support from different places and they would get a, a lump of support from a university and then they would have to look around again for another year to find a bit more support 
10,000 pounds here, bit of time from someone there. So it's trying to put all of that support together in one place so you work your way through without having to go and sell yourself over and over again to find the next stage of support and the next stage of support. And we'll especially look at that when it comes to the funding when we talk to Stuart. But just, just to move on and talk to Paula, so you're the director of the Business Information Group. Correct. But you're also working with us on Chamber Low Carbon. It's Low Carbon is a passion of yours, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So the Business Information Group is a consultancy organisation that works with businesses to help get their products to market, go through growth, obtain finance, and generally just um, succeed. So helping the people, making sure the skills are, are available. And because low carbon is a quite a, good, a big passion of mine, meeting with Miranda and Steve and becoming a consultant for the Chamber Low Carbon was quite exciting for me because the difference between what the Business Information Group does as a consultancy practice and working for Chamber Low Carbon is that we get to work with the inventors, with the people that have got the passion to make changes to our environment, to the way we um, manufacture, to the products that we actually use and how we um, reduce our carbon footprint in the UK and globally. And the beauty of being a consultant is you're there at the beginning. So in some cases, we are, as Stephen said, we've got the inventors that have got new products and don't really know what to do next, where to go. So they may have spoken to universities, but they actually need some development. They need redesign. They may need financial um, help. So they may need funding and grants. They may even need that next step into the manufacturers. So how do we get the prototype? What does that look like? And does that prototype then work? So it's the testing, it's the actual business side of it that the business information group gets involved with and that's where we fit into the low carbon consultancy. There's a, there's a huge issue with skills as well isn't there, we've, we've got a, an awful lot we hope of people there building new low carbon technologies in the future and also of course installing new low carbon technologies like, mm. like ice source heat pumps and the, the, those skills just aren't there. Absolutely. Um, there's a study by the, the local government association, the LGA, that's looked per working head of population across the UK and found that the area with the most potential for new low carbon skilled jobs is actually Lancashire. Mm. But it's really hard to find those jobs. The, the courses don't necessarily match what the, what the students and the, the, the businesses are going to need. And you're, that's correct. you're working with Burnley College on that. Yes, so working with Burnley College, we've um, done a little bit of a recce, we've spoken to several businesses and we've had a couple of group meetings to try and understand where we're going to get these skills from, what that curriculum would look like moving forward, because let's face it, a lot of the technology that we're working with moving forward, that we're actually developing now for the future, is brand new. So the skills that we have in existence currently don't necessarily lend themselves to be the whole set of skills that are required in the future as these new products are developed and new ways of working. So it's making sure that the skills that we already have, some of our existing skilled individuals and our new trainees coming up through the ranks, the guys coming through the schools and colleges, it's understanding what does that skill gap look like? What are the skills required going to be? And when we look at these new products and these new businesses, how do we then get the knowledge to be able to upskill the individuals we already have that want to move into that future um, business market? And how do we teach it? So Burnley College are putting a programme together to try and develop a skills curriculum that actually fits into low carbon futures. Brilliant. Um, it's very important piece is, is uh, this, this sort of really learning from the business audience what skills are needed. There's a new uh, project where Lancashire is one of eight trailblazers across the UK mm. called the Local Skills Improvement Plan. And both the Chambers of Commerce, North and West Lancs Chamber, and also our Chamber, East Lancs Chamber, are involved in that project. And we're there to try and hear what every business in Lancashire has got to say around what skills you need the lack of what skills are holding your business back. So do get in touch with us about that. I know at the event, end of all of these events, um, the, the Lancashire Innovation Festival team will be making sure all the contact details are circulated. So do get in touch with us about that if you're interested in your uh, getting your thoughts heard. So to move on to the really crunchy end oh. of the, the project in terms of how do we help real businesses get real low carbon technology away. This is, this is Stuart Thompson from the Global um, Energy 
um, systems. systems. I knew I was going to say it wrong. <laughs> Global Energy Systems. And they are based just down the road in Lytham, one of your That's plants, right. making air source heat pumps. So do, do first are. of all, tell us about your business. OK, thank you. Um, well, we're a family run um, business. We've been manufacturing in the region for nearly 200 years. So initially started off as a as an ironworks um, to support industry in the industrial revolution, and then about 60 years ago we set up a, a new factory in Lytham making automotive components, and about 15 years ago we started developing and manufacturing air source heat pumps on the site at, at Lytham. That's brilliant, and it's a family business, as you say. So you've got the whole of the whole of the family involved in this now. It is, yes, yeah. I think we're on the third generation of this reincarnation at the moment. That's excellent. That's excellent. So Global yeah. Energy Systems specialising in air source heat pumps. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about your involvement with the the Red Cat project. Sure. So so Red Cat is there to <coughs> really take some of that grant funding that we've got from government, which is one and a half million pounds from the Getting Building Fund. And all, every single penny of that money will be going into local businesses to help them increase their manufacture of low carbon technologies in Lancashire and help Lancashire really succeed in this field. So we've been working together to make sure yeah. you're getting some of that investment. Absolutely. And what's that investment going to help you do? Okay, so that the investment's been partly with the consultancy support that you've given the business. And also in terms, of it, it enables us to develop the business to the next level by building a new factory here in, in the file. Which is, which is brilliant, because it's Absolutely. low carbon jobs. So let me just explain um, to our audience the stages that that's helped um, and how it, how it sort of levers more funding in. So we are, are giving you a, a very small sort of six figure sum, um, which is going to allow you to, to build some temporary extension on your, your existing yeah. plant and double the number of heat pumps you produce at the moment to... Potentially quadruple. Potentially quadruple it, which is that's, brilliant. That's what we're aiming for. And then, as part of Red Cat, the idea is that we then work with you straight away to yeah. accelerate the getting of commercial funding, so that then you can times by ten that production. Absolutely, yeah. So at the moment, we so the family company um, currently is Helical Technology Group, and we have a small part of one of their factory units, uh, say down Dot Road in Lytham. Um, so productions pretty disorganised because we have to uh, bring stock in, we have to try and hold that stock within the production area, research and development, we have to move product out and store it somewhere else. So this investment will mean we can have a purpose-built factory that we can improve um, production smoothness, which means we can increase the numbers to meet with government demand and, and forecasts. Um, and it also means we can help drive down costs as well by by being more productive. And being being all in a sensible location all together and Yes, having it flow like a proper factory. And then and then the idea is that very much we help you sort of done that long term path of expansion yes. without you having to get a little bit of funding and then spend ages chasing around and pursuing someone to do the next bit. we yeah, because so up until there. this point, the investment has come from within the family itself, which which is great, and that they see the future in in this low carbon technology. But um, really, to push the business on further to the next level, we need your support. And that's that's what we want to be there for: is, is to make sure that Lancashire is the centre of low carbon technologies that it can be in the in the UK. Yeah. Super. So, Stephen. Tell us a bit about the 2030 Hub while you're here. The 2030 Hub uh, is uh, physically based in Liverpool, uh, but it is the world's first United Nations recognised local hub promoting the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we tend to work with, um, we're not a charity, we're actually a private sector business, so we did catch the uh, UN by surprise, because they thought local hubs would come from the local authorities or charities, they didn't expect the private sector to step up and actually start championing the sustainable development goals. But we've pushed the city, so we work with the city to actually look at how they're performing against the sustainable development goals. We've also uh, engaged with the business community to actually help them uh, foster and focus their strategies around contributions to the sustainable development goals. And if we look at uh, low carbon innovation and technologies, uh, goal seven is about clean and affordable energy. Uh, goal nine 
is about infrastructure innovation. And inf so, so actually the, the goals do fit in uh, to, with the low carbon technology and the development. And like I say, it is getting that balance between economic development, social impact, as well as environmental impact and getting the balance. So, um, and also we have a partnership with East Lancs Chamber of Commerce to actually widen and broaden out the scope so the Chamber Low Carbon Programme also incorporates the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals. No, that's brilliant. It's always worth publicising it. And because we're going to get questions through in a minute, it really helps if everyone who's um, asking questions knows who they're trying to direct those questions at. So we've been asked, can we just get everyone to say our, our names and who we are again? So that, just to help. I'm Miranda Barker. I'm the Chief Executive of East Lancashire Chamber of Commerce, and I'm the Programme Director for REDCAT, the Centre for Alternative Technologies. I'm Stuart Thompson, uh, Sales and Marketing Manager for Global Energy Systems. I'm Paula Gill, I'm the Managing Director of Business Information Group and a Low Carbon ch a Chamber Low Carbon Consultant. Stephen Sykes, I'm the Chamber Low Carbon Programme Manager and I'm also Co-Founder and Director of the 2030 Hub. So we'll talk for just a few more moments while we're waiting for those questions to come in. So, Stuart, from a practical yes. sense, What's been what's been the hardest thing in terms of sort of trying to build a business over the years? What's been what's been the kind of assistance you've needed that hasn't been there? Or alternatively, what's been wonderful that's worth telling us about? Crack is a big question. There. I know it's the last um, time. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, getting the, I suppose really it's been um, initially uh, funded internally, so that funding's only going to be very limited really um, and then it's I suppose one of the challenges as being uh, being a small British local manufacturer is being able to buy the components at competitive rates to be able to build the, the, the finished product to be competitive in a in a market which is still emerging yeah yeah and that uh, we've got a huge task because we need to have enough air source heat pumps and other mechanisms like ground source heat pumps and others yeah. to, to provide the, the, the energy for the entire UK, let alone export widely. So Absolutely. the demand on what you're producing is going to be huge. If you want me to just put a few figures to that, Please, just yes, put it into context. So I believe there's about 1.5 million gas boilers sold a year. Um, the government has a target to have to be installed in 600,000 heat pumps by 2028 and the current industry, if you like, our market at the moment is around about 40,000 units a year. That's everybody and there's some big players in there. So we've got a, we've got a, a huge amount of growth and we, we need support from yourselves. So we're, we're orders of magnitude away from coping with just the new purchases, let alone retrofitting everybody. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the biggest challenges will, will be in who's going to install this equipment. Yeah. There's currently uh, 800 registered Micro generation certification scheme installers for the um, UK for the whole of the oh, UK and 120,000 gas safe installers. <laughs> so, one of the things we're doing is uh, we're offering free training sessions to upskill current, um, you know, gas fitters and anybody else that wants to come into the industry. Yeah. So they're they're available. So if we've got if we've got young people in in places like this in the mm. Energy HQ in the Blackpool and Fowl College. Yeah. This is this is a good career field to get into. Oh, There's going to be a absolutely, and they could end up running their own business, couldn't they? Oh. Start off and train, and really quickly end up. Yeah, yeah, they really it's can. Aspiration, it's yeah. an aspiration. Okay. No, certainly, Stephen. How how do you think the government should be driving the take up of, of new low carbon technologies? What should they be doing for to get residents, but also businesses, to start taking these things up? Well, I think from, from a resident's point of view, you'll, you'll start off with the social housing sector uh, first, uh, the registered social landlords, because they get various grant funding to actually uh, build and retrofit or, uh, and refurbish properties. So I'd actually build, because that's something the government can target, because it's, it's, it, it's putting cash into that sector anyway, and you just put the um, uh, additional, um, uh, what should I say, um, specifications uh, to it. Equally, if you look at the government uh, now, they've actually put out a um, procurement uh, note whereby if they get, if you get in a contract from the government that's over uh, five, five million, 
uh, you've actually got to put your low carbon targets together and actually publish them during the length of that contract. So using government procurement can actually drive some of this uh, agenda uh, forward. So without making, it, you know, without new commitments, you can actually just adjust what's already in place. It's just putting a different lens uh, on what's happening rather than inventing something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we've talked about this whole this whole policy changes that we need to see government making to get them to drive the take up of low carbon technologies, and we're. We don't, we don't want people to think there's going to be masses and masses of money to help you do that, but there's going to be an awful lot of, of commercial inducements to do that, isn't there? Where if you want to do an, a contract for the NHS or for schools or for large companies, you're going to need in the future to really show your, your low carbon qualifications and skills and, and, and ambition and targets and, and output, aren't you, and results for your business. But equally, if you look at the uh, investment sector, uh, the institutional investors um, and actually the, the private investors as well, they're now looking more at uh, environmental and social governance. What is my money doing? Where is my money going? What's the impact of my money? And whether from uh, improving people's lives or actually not damaging the environment or improving the environment. So there is quite a lot of movement from uh, a lot of the big funders who are now focusing where they're putting their investments. And as I said, there's been a lot of um, companies pulling out of fossil fuel type investments and are now starting to look at, well, what's the, if we're not in fossil fuel, what are we going to be in? Mm -hmm. So it is, th yeah. th the world is changing a little bit. It's not going to happen in 2030, it, it's, it's starting to happen now. So if we have changes to, to, to big <coughs> procurement contracts and changes to planning permissions and changes to waste bills, and changes to energy prices, of course, we're seeing massively this week. That's a huge incentive to progress. I mean, Paula, I know you're working in depth with, with some of our local manufacturers. Mm. Are, they, are they seeing this as a, a market they want to get into, the manufacturing of low carbon technology? Absolutely. It's, it's kind of the way forward for everybody. So when we look at the manufacturers, there's always changes happening and there's always new products and new markets to get into. But low carbon is the way forward. There is a lot, you know, we just talked about, um, there are a lot of things that need to happen to be able to get us to the place we need to be by 2030. The things that we need to do now is engage with our manufacturers and make sure that they understand what the requirements are going to be, that their, their supply chain itself actually meets the criteria that we need to address to create a low carbon product, that we have the skills and the development of the skills of the individuals to get into the manufacturers so that they are, because these products, again, they're all brand new. Some of the technology that's going to be used to develop the products is going to be brand new. Therefore, the skills that are required are equally brand new. So all of these things link together. And I think the most important thing of all is um, that we kind of skirted over a little bit is the funding element of that. We definitely need to make sure that our businesses, our colleges, our inventors, um, our low carbon um, eco, giants are actually have the funds to be able to get us to the places that we need to be because we can uh, you know we everybody can agree that that's where we want to go but if we can't get there then it's you know we're wasting lots of time so um, I think we need to touch a little bit on how Redcat has developed quite a few businesses and helped a few businesses through funding, where we know that the government's gone through various issues at the moment and funding's been quite difficult to get hold of all over the UK, particularly in, in Lancashire. And Redcat has actually stepped up to the plate and supported many businesses, I believe, even your own business. So um, I think it's quite important to be able to say that funding is a huge part of this as well. That's the, the kind of like the, the stepping stone to get all of the other bits and pieces in place. Yeah, it is, it is the, 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 the grease that just makes those wheels yeah. just start to turn. Yeah. Um, we've, we've, just as an example, we've, we've got one company that we're supporting called Active Bacterial Solutions who are moving into labs at Lancaster University and literally finding bacterial solutions to pollutants. And over the coming years, they'll be generating up to 50 new jobs based there. Mm -hmm. We've got another company called River Power Pod, who makes a micro, micro hydro device 
that's now being manufactured in Kenya from recycled plastic, and that's a Lancashire innovation that's been exported. So we have some brilliant technologies and brilliant companies that we're trying to support, but it is, it's hard to get those going. Yeah. Um, we're going to take some questions, so I'll, uh, I'll try and field those questions to the, the most enthusiastic looking, looking <laughs> panellist. Um, so uh, that would be good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good discussion there. One of the questions that's come in is, has the pandemic helped businesses in the low carbon sectors? And if so, how? I'll start off with a little bit of an intro and then we'll see okay. who, who. I mean, when, we, when we're looking across Lancashire and um, we're seeing all the different sectors in, in Lancashire, from, from aerospace to automotive to food and drink to tourism and low carbon, the most resilient to, to COVID and the impact on the sort of compressing the depressing the business has actually been the low carbon sector. They have been the the most resilient throughout the whole of that that crisis. And we've also seen huge amount of attention being turned on on low carbon in the last year. So there's far more enthusiasm and drive and also support to progress people to absorb and t take up those low carbon technologies. So I don't, are you feeling that on the ground? Uh, yes, we are actually. Uh, so sort of two parts to, to my response to that very good question. I think the first one is that we've seen a lot of the bigger projects through COVID and, and lockdown were put on hold, but what we have seen a massive increase is in retail or homeowners who around about 40% of our inquiries now are coming from on gas areas, people that want to do the right thing and want to save carbon. And I think to answer the question about the pandemic, because a lot of people weren't able to spend the money on holidays and things like that, they tend to have reinvested that back in their homes and you know, an eco-friendly heating system yeah. seems to have been a very popular choice. That's excellent. So it's, mm. it's uh, that money that people had, and furloughs helped with that because they haven't been out looking for jobs, they've been able to keep that, that yeah. and decide to spend it in that way. That's fantastic. And I think the world's attention seems to be turned at the moment to, to, to low carbon with COP26 and you're seeing businesses starting to, to talk about their emissions. And are you seeing the same thing in terms of the, the um, co this whole coronavirus period seeing an acceleration of, of take up? I was going to say, we've, what we've seen is that in, in Lancashire, because we've had a, especially in East Lancashire, we have a, a, a high predominance of um, manufacturing uh, companies. So actually, they weren't working from home. They were actually still in the factory. They were still producing products. But equally, because there's been that wider public awareness of that reconnection to the environment, the fact that COP26 is coming, the fact that the government is talking uh, about a green industrial revolution, all those things, the, the manufacturing companies that have actually still carried on making money, still been making products, are now starting to invest in their own bricks and mortar by introducing low carbon technology. So, so for Lancashire, we've, we've actually seen that there is the, it has been quite a positive uh, impact from that sense, even though there's been quite a lot of negativity with it. But yes, I think the low carbon sector has benefited, but be on the back of manufacturing has carried on going. Uh, and we're now in a bounce back and mm. people are starting to look at their own bricks and mortar, and especially with the energy uh, crisis at the moment, they're now looking at how can we guarantee our own energy security. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think, yes. Paula, have you seen the same thing with yeah, your clients? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that um, really shone through was our issue with supply chain. So when you start looking at your supply chain and where it's coming from and how that supply chain performs in itself, and you have to readdress that. The manufacturers automatically were kind of driven down that route anyway to have a, um, a rethink about the supply chain and how that works and what that looks like. And actually, how can we change and improve? And we've got um, targets that we have to hit, especially the manufacturers. And you know, if we're going to make the changes now, then we, m we should be adopting all of those things. And let's face it, we looked at a completely different world. You know, the sun shone brightly, the, the, the sky was blue, and we all kind of said, is this because of the changes that we've taken, you know, we've had to take on board? And of course, every, <coughs> that impacts everybody's thought process as well. So you do start to look underneath the bonnet mm. um, a little bit more. So there's definitely been huge changes. And as well, because the market is driving towards low carbon, manufacturers are automatically going to start looking at that, looking at the opportunities that are available for them to enter those markets. And I think with, um, 
the big push now on net zero, so the language has all started to change. Mm -hmm. And the large companies have all started to make their net zero commitments. But of course, when they look at net zero, they've been managing the scope one, their direct emissions, their scope two, their indirect emissions. They've been managing those. But once they start going looking at net zero, they've got to start looking at scope three, the value chain, the supply mm -hmm. chain. Yeah. And that's the big challenge for a lot of companies is to actually how do they make those changes. And I think that is going to stimulate more low carbon innovation because decarbonizing not only the, the uh, energy infrastructure, but actually the, the kit that we run from that decarbonized yeah. uh, en energy infrastructure. So I think this is just the start of, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, a new revolution, a new wave. Yeah, I, th I think we are. We're seeing multiple factors accelerating it now. Because I think what you'd normally see is you'd see you'd see a bell curve like that, where you've got your early adopters at the front, people like Crystal Doors and Richard Hagen really leading the way, and seeing a commercial advantage from being that very aspirational organisation. And then you'd see all the companies in the middle who are noticing that the, the market's going that way and they'll go slowly. And then the ones at the back who won't move until some sort of financial pressure really kicks them along. But with the attention shone on the whole thing from, from COVID, from the 10 point plan, from the, 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 the youth movement, and Greta and the, the crew, <laughs> have, have really sort of made the, the pressure much more um, strongly felt in that central sector. Your employees want to see this as something they want to move into and, and your, your shareholders do. And now the energy price increase is really pushing along that, that really sort of reluctant group at the back who won't do it until it's financially driven. So I think it's the whole of coronavirus and the time we've had at home and then the, the financial pressures we're now seeing has really pushed the market along in terms of take up of low carbon technologies. Great, thanks for those answers. Um, thinking about Electec, um, Northwest Aerospace sorry, and Dark. Sorry. Um, thinking about Electec, Northwest Aerospace and our uh, clusters, how do the clusters work together um, towards low carbon goals? That's a good question. I mean, when we, when we look, I'm a, I'm a director on Lancashire LEP, the Local Enterprise Partnership. And when we've looked across Lancashire, we understand the areas where we really succeed now and where we have a strong possibility to keep on succeeding in the future. So aerospace, automotive, advanced manufacturing across those areas, but also health, nuclear, rail, um, health and innovation, health innovation and well-being sector, even tourism and, and food and drink, where we lead on sort of manufacturing excellence in those areas. We're looking at each of those sectors and we're looking at how to help them thrive. But as you say, we've also got to make sure every sector is starting to think, how do we decarbonize ourselves? How do we work towards a long-term uh, financial and growth that can be possible, but while being environmentally sound? And Stephen, you're, you're looking at certain things with different businesses and different sectors now in, in terms of trying to support all sorts of businesses moving in this direction. I was going to say that it isn't just one sector. They're, they're all starting to feel the pinch. They're all starting to look at it. And, look at, and, and like I say, we, we, we work a lot with um, Electricity Northwest. So their challenge to actually decarbonize the infrastructure of how they distribute uh, energy. And equally, they're now having to get the infrastructure ready for when um, you, you as a resident, you as a householder, uh, no longer are just a consumer, but you are a prosumer. So you're producing electricity as well as consuming electricity. And actually, how do we get the infrastructure for that two-way mm -hmm. flow uh, of energy? So. Uh, as they start to develop those technologies, they will impact on the different clusters and how they're developing their technologies. So I think there is more of a movement to try and um, mm. get a more coordinated approach. I don't think we're there yet, but I think there's, there's, there's now a groundswell that will actually push people to actually start looking over the fence mm. and actually start looking at what can we learn from other sectors. Because mm. some sectors are actually much, much further a ahead down this line because they've been pushed yeah. earlier. That, that's I think that's true. So you've, you've got individual sectors like aerospace looking at jet zero. 
you've got you've got industries looking at the electric vehicles. So, for instance, Emerson and Rennick or ENR as they've now rebranded in Accrington, they're producing the manufacturing lines for new electric vehicle batteries for Nissan and Jaguar Land Rover. So we're leading on doing that too. But also there are sectors that are much more aware of this. So food and drink has been into waste minimization and cost cutting for the sake of financial reasons for a long time. But mm. so you're getting that sort of sector split. But, and then you're getting a sort of movement across the whole of the small businesses market to, to go in that direction. But it is, like you say, it's all subdivided, isn't it? We haven't got a <coughs> wide approach yet. Oh, okay. So there's no consistent approach yet. Yeah. Yeah. And how about, how about from the practical side of the supplying into those? Are you yeah, I, I think sector difference? I think that in terms of um, clusters, heat pumps are not just for residential homes. And I think there are we spend a, spending a lot of time now educating industry and networking and events like that to, to spread the word that there is an alternative to fossil fuels for heating your, your business. Um, Practical question, mm. and I'll put you on the spot, apologies. You. If, you're, if you're a small business, what, what size of business is a heat pump going to work for or do they need several or, you know, if, if we're talking about our offices or how, does, how do they work that out, what they need as from a yeah. business point? So there's, there's certain software that we use to, to work out the heat loss of the building and the room temperatures uh, but you we as a man manuf British manufacturer we manufacture not only small units but commercial units and those commercial units can be what are called cascaded or bolted together to give you the desired output uh -huh. so whether it's a small industrial unit or a big council office we have a solution for it so for you can just use them use them sort of Daisy chain them together. You can do exactly. Perfect. Right. That's what we need to know because right. I didn't. I hadn't thought about that before. So, no, I know it's a lot of education to do. Right? Well, that's the whole problem, isn't it? It's yeah. acceleration, like education like that. So, no, thank you very much. You're welcome. Next question. I think we've got probably got time for one more question. Um, what advice would you have for graduates that are looking to move into the low carbon sector, um, and how important do you think? Uh, young people coming into sector will be for driving it forward? There are going to be so many opportunities. Um, there are going to be courses that are being developed through the colleges, as, as Paula was saying, all the colleges in Lancashire are working together on a whole range of, of low carbon uh, skills uh, courses for the very practical end, whether that's installation, whether that's being a, a low carbon champion within a, a big business or a whole supply chain of businesses, all the way through to the ones coming through higher education and really in-depth degree courses looking at, at, at uh, supporting businesses and, and whole industries inventing new ways to go down the route of, of decarbonisation. So there's a massive range. I mean, Stephen, what would you, what would you say in terms of the, the opportunities and how to get into it? I hate being asked these questions because <laughs> I get asked by, by colleges on a regular basis, would I come in and actually tell students how I got to where I am today. And I always say, I am the worst person that you could ever ask this question of, because I started off in the chemical industry. I loved chemistry, maths, and biology uh, at school. So I, I went, to, well, I tried to go into the NHS first of all, but wasn't quite up to the blood and guts side of things. Um, and ended up in the chemical uh, manufacturers, uh, where, I, where I learned an awful lot about manufacturing just in time pollution prevention. Chemical industry, you've got to be doing 100% um, more than everybody else just to be seen to be doing half of what everybody else is doing. Um, and I only got into uh, that because I left there and don't join groundwork purely because I was working with small companies doing exactly what I've been doing in the chemical industry for 16 years. So the job of an environmental consultant didn't exist when I left school. And equally, there'll be jobs in 10 years time that don't exist. So it's gonna be an ever rapidly moving thing. And actually, you can create your own careers. Mm. Which is a great opportunity. Paula? Yeah. yeah, I just want to add a little bit to that. I think that this is a huge opportunity for young people coming through schools, colleges, and universities, coming into the, the world of work right now, because it is all changing. This is not one element of the world of industry that is being impacted. It's everything. Mm -hmm. So there, as Stephen said, you could almost write your own dis job description in the future if you are passionate enough about it yeah, and you are 
worthy and ready to actually educate the masses because that's what we've got to do. As everybody said on this panel, this is a re-education process of the rest of the world, whether it's from our children in schools or whether it's through to running industry. It's the choices that we make, it's the decisions that we make, and it's how we actually move forward mm -hmm. in everything that we do. So there's a, I, th I think that, that there's no broader statement than there is every opportunity out there for everybody coming out through schools now, yeah. absolutely. How about the, the people coming in to work with you? Yeah, well, we, we do recruit gra graduates. We do have a graduate scheme, um, and we, we really welcome graduates with innovative, innovative? <laughs> uh, ideas to, to bring them to industry because we're going to need to because the product has already evolved massively over the last 15 years that I've been in it and it will again even further like Steve yeah. and Paula were saying um, at the grassroots level we've, um, we've engaged with St Helens uh, College to produce a, um, a qualification for heat pumps and uh, obviously we would welcome more colleges because we have to educate and train an awful mm -hmm. lot of apprentices and young people coming through business and also older people who want to retrain and engage with this technology. We really welcome them. So there's, there's opportunities to move into installation, into oh. manufacture, yeah. into working within businesses, helping them actually lead them down to a more, a more decarbonised route to be literally consultants and builders and manufacturers and innovators all over, all over Lancashire. It's, a, it's going to be a huge, a huge opportunity. And as I say, Lancashire has got the largest number of potential skills in low carbon um, in the whole of the UK, which is great. So let's just wrap up. Any, anything anyone would like to say in terms of supporting? How do, we, how do we support low carbon technologies through Lancashire? Does anyone want to just add in any last final words that you want to say before I sort of... I think well, uh, from a personal perspective, um, as much as a business perspective, I think we've got to listen to the ideas that people have and the passions behind them and actually what they want to achieve with the things that they design or the ideas that they dream up. And it's teams like East Lanks Chamber of Commerce, the Law Carbon team, that put some energy into that to try and make that a reality. The, we look at that, we talk to local manufacturers on how they would go about being involved in developing a product and manufacturing a product. We look at agents that want to take a product to market. We work with the universities to help make sure that the design and the testing is done so you have a viable product. So from a support perspective, what I would say is no idea is a bad idea until it's proven so. So if you really do want to be an eco-giant like Stephen over here, and you want to develop a product that's going to help us save our planet, that's going to reduce our carbon footprint, that's going to help us move forward um, on our current path, then you definitely could come and talk to one of us, all of us. The, the manufacturers are educating us all at the same time. Nice. It's okay. important. I was just going to say, the one word is collaboration. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. That's the way to take us forward. And uh, from Global Energy Systems? I think um, without your support, we would have probably muddled on for a bit longer and carried on very small, very small but organic growth. So you've enabled our business and future-proof people's jobs in the local area as well by supporting us. Thank you very much. So Lancashire really is a place where there's an awful lot of support to help you develop your new low carbon technology. And you can get hold of us. You'll be able to find the details for the Chamber Low Carbon Programme for the Red Cat project, for Business Information Group, and if you need an air source peak pump, Google Global Energy Systems. Thank you. Thank you very much.